we are an investment custodian. So we custody the assets. We, um, you know, administer the transactions, do paperwork. We report to the IRS at the end of the year on behalf of our clients. So um, the IRA, the individual retirement account, was developed in 1974. Along with that tax code, there was a provision that allowed people to invest the money in those accounts in alternative assets outside of the stock market. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. This is Max Pittman from Write For Me, and you're listening to, listening to the Business Ninjas podcast, where we meet the experts who are scaling their businesses. And today we're talking about New View Trust with Steve Maldonado, who is the Director of Syndication Solutions at New View. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Certainly, Max. Thank you so much for having me. How's everything today? Everything's good. It was good. It's it's, uh, it's a Tuesday here, so we're, we're getting off to a productive start. And on the West Coast, hopefully you've had a good day on the East Coast so far. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, before we jump into you, know, you and your role at New View, um, I've had a, the opportunity to meet with you and kind of get to know you a little bit. Um, but, you know, let's let the listeners kind of understand a little bit about yourself. So if you don't mind, you know, give uh, give listeners a little quick rundown about who is Steve Maldonado. <laughs> yeah, well, like you mentioned at the top, um, I am the director of syndication uh, solutions for Newview Trust Company. Um, I'm a South Florida native, um, moved up to Orlando about eight years ago. Um, and at that time, I uh, was introduced to David Gazinski. He's a, a landlord, et cetera, a very active uh, real estate investor in the area. Um, I was looking for a place to live, um, got connected with him and, and, and found a place to live. And, you know, after talking with him, he was on Wall Street for 40 years, et cetera. And he you know, had told me about um, buying the condo that I live in in his IRA. And I thought, you know, you need to tell me more about this. It sounds kind of like a scam and um, didn't really think much of it. Um, fast forward a couple years after that, he made some introductions to the folks at New View Trust, and uh, the rest is history. Um, done a lot um, in my time here with New View, um, you know, kind of uh, worn many hats. Um, you know, we're in a bunch of different, we're integrated into a bunch of different verticals, both the retail advisory and syndications. And I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit later on in the podcast. Um, but I more specifically manage our syndication solutions team, helping people raising capital, um, access capital through self-directed IRA and 401k investors. That's helpful. Yeah, I was going to ask, though, like the, the title is, is a new, unique title. I've been in sales and sales development and uh, account management for a while. And I, I don't know if I've ever come across the title syndication solutions. So tell us a little bit about your role. And you mentioned, you know, you're helping people raise capital. Um, what does that mean? Sure. Like I said, uh, we are split into three different lines of business. We have a retail division, an advisory division, and then a syndication division. Our retail division helps individual investors invest in a variety of alternative assets, whether that be precious metals, cryptocurrency, uh, private lending, et cetera. Um, our advisory team helps those individual clients that were, are working with a financial advisor, right? So exactly what it sounds like. And then on the syndication side, syndications are a group of investors getting together um, to either purchase a piece of real property, invest in a business. Um, I mean, there's really so many opportunities. Um, by all means, it's fundraising and crowdfunding. So if you've heard of platforms like Fundrise or CrowdStreet or any of the big, uh, you know, crowdfunding platforms, it's essentially what we do. Um, other than, you know, um, sorry, rather than helping them raise through personal capital, we help them access the funds in uh, individuals' retirement accounts um, for the purpose of these alternative asset investments. So um, okay. in, in summation, uh, syndications, again, are a group of people raising capital all for one common investment purpose, whether that be to put up a multifamily apartment, to mm -hmm. study the cure for cancer, um, to develop new AI technologies. I mean, really the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. um, it's anybody raising capital. And those can be tech startups. Those can be, like I mentioned, multifamily or real estate ventures, uh, just really any private equity. Gotcha. You know, from the outside looking in, like it kind of sounds like a hedge fund, but you tell me like, where, where's the differences there? Again, as a novice, like I just want to yep. make sure I understand. 
Sure thing. So yeah, we are an investment custodian. So we custody the assets. We um, you know administer the transactions, do paperwork. We report to the IRS at the end of the year on behalf of our clients. So um, the IRA, the individual retirement account, was developed in 1974. Along with that tax code, there was a provision that allowed people to invest the money in those accounts in alternative assets outside of the stock market. So people are typically investing in you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Those are standard securities. New View focuses more on alternative asset investing. So those are things outside of the stock market. They tend to be a little bit more tangible, whether it's real property, like I said, precious metals, um, cryptocurrency, obviously is not tangible, but you know, it's something that, uh, you know, again, is still outside of the standard securities market. So we're a custodian. So we mm. hold people's funds here. We administer the transactions, um, but we are not um, an active investment firm. Um, so we don't sell investments. We um, are not financial professionals in the sense that we provide financial advice. Actually, under the rules and terms of our charter, we're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, all of our investors come to us with their investments in mind. They've done their own due diligence and generally they're ready to go. Um, the best way that I describe our relationship with our customers is that they point, we shoot. So they tell us what they want to do and we help them get it done, but we don't interpret anything other than that. We just help them process paperwork. Gotcha. That's actually really helpful. I love that analogy. Hey, you you point us where we need to go. We'll we'll shoot it there. That's that's really helpful. So like, you know, thinking about the organization as a whole, um, you've been there for a little bit, and I don't want to like put you on the spot, but this is something that like I love to like ask people because I know I've always imagined myself being on Shark Tank. Uh, maybe that's <laughs> pitching of the sharks or or being a shark myself. And you've kind of given me a nice, like kind of high level, but can you give me new views elevator pitch? Like what problem does your company solve? Sure. Um, you know, again, looking at the, 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 the business as a whole, rather than just my specific business line, mm -hmm. um, you know, new view helps people save for their retirement. Mm -hmm in the simplest fashion, right? Um, again, like I mentioned, uh, people are limited to the stock market and with the volatility of the stock market, especially at this point in time, you know, people are left uncertain um, and they're looking for different places to put their money. Um, you know, over the last 20 years in business, we've connected with, you know, hundreds, uh, if not thousands of, you know, product sponsors and, um, you know, I've really figured out a way to do this business well. Um, so we really help people, you know, invest in alternative assets quickly, yeah. efficiently, um, and through a streamlined process. Very cool. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, um, it's funny. Like you know, me being a, a first time home buyer, um, thinking about like how I'm thinking about my retirement. I'm only 33 years old, but still, mm -hmm. like now I have a house. I'm like, okay, now there's now like now the fun part begins. I feel like now that I've finally got skin in the game a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's never too early to save for your retirement. It's really interesting to see, you know, all of the different asset classes that are available to investors. And, you know, private equity has been something that's kind of been a secret of the super rich for a long time, um, yeah. but has been, you know, more popularized over the last, you know, uh, five, 10 years or so, mm -hmm. um, especially as it pertains to, you know, uh, multifamily or real estate investing, right? You're seeing uh, after the Jobs Act in 2012 was passed, that's the our Jumpstart Our uh, Small Business Act, um, it allowed for these uh, crowdfunding offerings, right? Whether that's to be the 506B or 506C. And those are really powerful tools that allow people to elicit capital from, you know, investors like we're discussing today, the IRA and 401k investors. I mean, it's hard to go out and raise capital through personal, you know, uh, personal capital or just friends mm -hmm. and family. Um, and so the IRA market is a $14 trillion market. Um, who wouldn't want to have um, access to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what are the top verticals, I guess, you know, you guys would say is like your ideal customer? I know you mentioned you there's a retail division, you also have an advisory team, and then you're on the syndication team. So like, how would you break out like your ideal customer, um, either from like a, you know, cust individual customer perspective to, uh, you know, a business that you or, you know, or property, right? Like, how do you guys break that out? Sure. Um, so kind of like I described, um, I would describe our retail relationships as B2C relationships, right? We are going out, we are connecting directly with the consumer, educating them on our product, why they would want to invest in these accounts tax-free and tax-deferred, um, and getting them through the entire process. Our advisory team and our syndication solutions team focuses on business relationships. So it's by all means a business to business, you know, type selling relationship uh, where the advisor, the financial advisor uh, is our client um, or the syndicator, the person raising capital is our client. 
Um, we, of course, you know, help help their investors or their clients right through the process to help make everything. But by all means, when we're out prospecting business or we're going after our ideal customers. We're going after firms on the syndication and the advisory side um, mm-hmm. and the retail clients are are uh, individual investors and we're going after, you know, the consumer directly. Mm-hmm. So you're going after these individual you know, advisors and firms, like how typic- how big are those firms typically? Yeah, so um, they really vary in size, uh, but our advisory solutions team and our syndication solutions team is uh, uh, for volume-based customers. So any mm-hmm. advisor uh, group that we're working with typically has about 100 clients or so um, that they're looking to have work with us. Um, and then the number just goes up from there. And the same thing with the syndications. I mean, the syndications can really accept... Um, you know, unlimited amounts of funds until, or unlimited amounts of people until they hit their, um, you know, capital raising goal. Um, So those really vary. Um, I couldn't say specifically, you know, how many, you know, um, how many people they bring in, but I would say the capital raises are anywhere from 50 million to a hundred million dollars. And we can see, you know, maybe three, five of those deals come through uh, from one uh, investment sponsor or firm um, every year. Oh, wow. Okay. That's really helpful. I think it's, it's good to know just for, from my own perspective, like, okay, like I'm not with Morgan Stanley, right. I'm not with, um, uh, or, um, you know, Wells Fargo or like private bank, something like that. You know, I'm, I have my funds with, with, uh, with my own financial advisor, who's probably at like a team of four, five or six, but who knows how much they're actually managing. So it almost sounds like, you know, where I have my money invested is potentially an area that, you know, that, that could be as, you know, a good fit, ideal customer for you guys to get in front of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our, our network is our net worth, right? That's what they always say. And so, uh, you know, any any opportunity to meet, uh, you know, a new group um, mm-hmm. and, and see how we can do business. I mean, like I said, you know, who we do business with, it really varies. Um, you know, we don't want to discriminate the way, again, we define our business is really where the, where the investors or where the clients are coming from, right? If they're working specifically with the financial advisor, they typically mm-hmm. have an agreement, they pay that advisor commissions and you know everything mm-hmm. else, right? We don't want to disrupt any of that. Um, our services are essentially a bolt-on to whatever services they offer already to their client. Yeah. Um, you know, but so so by all means, if you if you know anybody, let us know. Yeah, and we'll, of course. <laughs> if you have to bet them out. Of course. Yeah. Of course. No, that's that's helpful. Um, what about like um, geographic restrictions. Are you guys only working, you know, in specific regions, specific states? Where, where's the re- geographic focus? Yeah, great question. I mean, that's really the exciting thing about what I do. So uh, we are headquartered here in Longwood, Florida. Um, so a little bit north of Orlando. Um, we are chartered out of South Dakota, um, and we really do business all over the continental United States. Um, however, um, and, and, and that really is mostly because um, the individuals that hold retirement accounts are Americans, right? The IRAs uh, and 401ks, by all means, are typically, you know, U.S. V- retirement vehicles. Uh, mm-hmm. Canada has their own, the RSP and, you know, other, other uh, countries have their own retirement vehicles. By, by all means, the IRA is a U.S. vehicle. Um, so primarily, we're operating in the U.S. I mean, most of the events that we attend, most of the, you know, the firms that we work with are here in the U.S., um, however, there are private equity firms, um, you know, that we work with globally um, that raise money through, um, you know, American investors. Um, you know, furthermore, um, we deal with a lot of expats that are looking to invest in these private equities. And so we have firms that are, you know, global um, that work specifically with expats. We have some people in Canada, some people in, you know, Belize and, and, and you know, other parts of the world as well. So uh, we're really global. And again, that's what really excites me is, you know, we're not, you know, limited to one geographic region or area. Um, we really can help um, almost anybody. Very cool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So what is it about, um, you know, you um, or new view that that, you know, firms will choose you over over competition? What is that secret sauce? What is it something like that you guys are doing that helps you stand out against the competition right now? Yeah. So like I said, I mean, private equity um, and investing in alternative assets has really been, you know, for lack of a better term, one of those secrets of the super rich. Right. And like I said, it's gained more popularity in the last five or 10 years. 
Um, Newview is actually going to be celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. Um, mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that. Um, but one thing that we've really identified as the major pain is, you know, how manual the process is, right? Um, that, you know, any company that's in the industry is still making everybody do everything, you know, um, with a PDF or, you know, hand signature. Um, and so we've really maximized on that. We've become the most uh, service oriented IRA custodian on the market. We've digitized our entire process, making it as streamlined as possible for investors to get started with us and then also make investments once once they're ready to go. Um, furthermore, I mean, with, with some of our advisory uh, and syndication you know, partners, um, we have API integration and other ways to integrate with their existing back office and technologies that other firms just don't have um, and are years away from uh, actually implementing. So we, we think that we're very technology forward um, and way ahead. Um, uh, leaps and bounds, you know, uh, further than, you know, many of the other custodians on our market. Um, and then furthermore, just really understand the market and what, um, you know, what it needs to be the most, you know, service oriented, self-directed IRA custodian on the market. Gotcha. Sounds like the, uh, the 21st century is you guys are leaps and bounds tech forward <laughs> ahead of the competition. Sounds like. Yeah, we try, you know, technology is changing every day. Right. And if we don't keep up with it, we'll be left behind. Um, you know, so we're doing our best to, you know, really listen to what our clients, our investors are saying um, mm -hmm. and try to, you know, keep up with with what they want um, and what they want um, is for deals to be funded quickly um, and for them to be able to open up accounts, you know, efficiently. Um, you know, many of the people that um, do work with us, they are on the um, older side of the demographic. Like I said, it's never too early to save for your retirement, but most of the people that have, um, you know, means to invest in these alternative assets have a little bit more saved up. Um, and so as a result, um, you know, they need a little bit more handholding. They're not the most, um, you know, they want to deal with paperwork and scanning it in and, you know, hand signing and emailing. Awesome. It. So <laughs> you get a link to your portal, you sign up for your portal and you can do everything from there. Yeah. Yeah. Faxing too, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, at least I even know what a fax is, I guess. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what what would you say is like the biggest challenge that uh, New View is facing right now as a business? What is what is like you know that top priority? We just started here in the new year. What are you guys focusing on solving right now? Yeah, I mean, I think. Um part of the reason that we're here, right, is we're trying to, you know, really get our name out there in the market. Um, obviously, COVID put a damper on, you know, everybody's business. Um, you know, we found find a lot of success, you know, being in front of people at events, speaking otherwise. Um, and we've, you know, done our best to really expand our content. Um, you know, we believe that it requires a lot of education um, to come in and start working with us. Um, we know that, well, to my knowledge, I don't know of anybody that's figured out how to be in, you know, more than one place physically um, at a time. And so, um, you know, understanding that problem, um, we have to be everywhere, right? And so the only one of the ways to do that is to, you know, really, you um, leverage our content, right, for the purpose of sales, but education, you know, more specifically. And I think that's one one area where we've been lacking yeah. um, a lot is being, you know, a, a thought leader and educator. Um, and so we are, we're trying to, you know, um, produce more content on our side. That's a huge focus for us in 2023. Um, participating in events um, is a huge thing for us in 2023. Um, but we really think that we've fallen off on education. We tried to be, you know, that thought leader in the space. Um, and we do see other um, you know, competitors of ours doing it a lot better. Um, and so that's one place where we feel a bit vulnerable um, and definitely where we'll be doubling down going into 2023. Well, what is something that you guys did or have done prior? Like what was marketing's role in helping the business stand out prior to where we are? Yeah, good question. So, I mean, we've really focused on a corporate marketing, uh, you know, strategy where it was all about new view. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we do have three different lines of business. Um, and that can be a little bit confusing as it comes to content. Um, we've really focused on, uh, I'm trying not to give too much away, but we focused on some rebranding um, and what that might look like to help, um, you know, segment um, our businesses while still staying continuous or, you know, having mm -hmm. some continuity across social media. Um, so we've done that. Um, I mean, we have a webinar series that we do every Wednesday. Um, so we've really doubled down on those efforts. Um, we think that we produced it very well, but we're also going to, you know, hopefully launch a podcast um, here. We just think having more natural conversations is just an easier way uh, to get some of the information out of the people that we speak with um, and just something that they're a little bit more comfortable with as well. Very cool. Well, let's, let's talk really quick about 
you know, where people can find you. Um, you just mentioned some events. You guys have a webinar series. You know, feel free to kind of share and kind of plug what you guys have going on right now. Yeah, good deal. So yeah, we'll be at a number of events uh, over the next few months, uh, really in all of the different verticals uh, of our business, right? So we are going to Best Ever Conference in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah next month. We'll be at, um, you know, IPA and then the Buttonwood Conference next week. Um, we have some of our team members going to the Invest Her, which is a group of uh, 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 ladies, uh, lady real estate investors. Um, that will be happening shortly thereafter. Um, but really, if you guys uh, have any questions regarding self-directed IRAs, uh, raising capital, uh, really any of the things that we discussed, the best way to reach us is going to our website, newviewtrust.com. Uh, you can email my team at syndication at newviewtrust.com. Um, or give us a call at 407-305-0675. I love it. That's great. The webinar series, that's that's every week too. How do they find that? Yeah, uh, sorry. Webinar series every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Um, those will be live streamed to all of our social media channels. So YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can find us at Newview Trust is our handle on all of those platforms. And again, that will be uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Gotcha. Perfect. So like, what do you, what is something like a year from now, like that you guys want to be celebrating? Like, is there something that, you know, is on the, you know, the roadmap for the next year? Uh, I know we talked a little bit about content and growing that out, but is there, you know, so, you know, as you guys are thinking about growing and scaling the business, what, what is it that you guys want to be celebrating? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, as far as, as far as, uh, you know, metric AUM or assets under management, assets under custody is a huge metric for, you know, firms like ours um, to track. Uh, we currently have $2.5 billion um, in assets under management, um, but hoping in the next year to uh, cross that threshold above three um, and hopefully even into the 3.5. So um, it's been a steady progression, uh, but we definitely think that we can get there. Um, and that's Newview as a whole. Um, on the syndication side, uh, we have just crossed the threshold. We've helped fund $1.25 billion um, in private equities um, since our inception. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping to, you know, raise at least another $500 million um, or more um, in the next year. Very cool. I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, you guys have been around for 20 years. It's a great, great metric to track. And uh, it seems like that's, and it's an achievable metric for you guys as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the desire for private equity and private capital is, you know, only getting, you know, uh, more popularized or, or sorry, mm -hmm. increasing right in demand. And, um, you know, we'll see technology continue to, you know, expand and uh, really um, continue to lower the barrier for entry as it relates to a lot of these investments. And, you know, we're seeing it, like I mentioned with CrowdStreet and YieldStreet and a few of these other platforms that are really solving that middle market problem. So we'll see, you know, not only the super rich being able to invest, but we'll see people like, you know, ourselves, Max, that, you know, don't have as much as them, but, you know, might want to start getting getting, um, you know, started on saving for our retirement. And so, you know, we're really excited to see, you know, where things are going. I mean, like I mentioned, uh, you know, earlier, there's $14 trillion in IRA assets, and there's another $19 trillion in defined benefit and contributions plans that will be rolled over in the next 10 years. So a lot of opportunity, a lot of potential. I think last, last month alone, there was about $8 billion raised in private equity. So um, plenty of opportunity for us. And we're just excited to be on the ride. When I hear those numbers, it just, it, it seems like it's, it, it doesn't feel real sometimes. So <laughs> just crazy. Yeah. How he's out there. <laughs> yeah. Likewise. But you know, that's our bread and butter. It's, it's, yeah. it's always important to know our numbers. And, um, yeah. you know, like I said, we are seeing a lot more people allocate their portfolio to alternative asset investing. Um, yeah. and I think that we'll see, you know, more and more of that in the next, you know, five, 10 years, like I said, Definitely. there's tremendous opportunity out there and just excited to be a part of it. Definitely. Well, it's, it's something that I'm going to have a conversation with my advisor about. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great. Anything else before we wrap up here that you want to share or, you know, that you think the listeners might need to know about you or the company that we haven't covered thus far? Just want to make sure I leave the floor open for you. No. Yeah, Max, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate, uh, you know, getting some time today to tell uh, your listeners all about what Newview Trust Company does, what I do as the director of syndication solutions. Um, if, Anybody is interested, again, don't hesitate to reach out to us, newviewtrust.com. Um, you can find educational resources and all of our details. Um, and otherwise, no, thank you so much, Max, for having me on. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I appreciate you educating me on, on what Newview is and what you guys are doing. And uh, I appreciate your time as well. I definitely enjoyed this conversation. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here. And again, this is Steve Maldonado from Newview Trust. 
Um, this is Max Pittman signing off from the Business Ninjas podcast. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Have a great rest of the day.